Hi there! Welcome to Koi, a YouTube channel about natural curiosities. Today we have a bunch of specimens to discuss, and they all represent a fascinating kind of fossils called petrified wood. What is cool about petrified wood? First of all, many specimens are huge chunks of colorful gemstones with unique patterns. Secondly, the fossilized trees represent organisms that lived many million years ago. And even though it was Earth, the Earth itself was a quite different planet at that time. And who knows what beasts were hiding under the shadows of those trees. Nonetheless, the most amazing feature of petrified wood, in my view, is an exceptional preservation of minute details down to the cellular structure. Eons have passed since the trees were alive, and it is mind-blowing that you can still recognize individual cells looking under the microscope at a polished slab. However, many people, even those that collect petrified wood, rarely have a chance to actually observe the microscopic beauty of their specimens. In a few minutes, you will see what we were able to discover on the surface of the slabs that were recently added to our collection. We will also check the fluorescence of these rocks under UV light. So, stay tuned if you want to learn more about petrified wood. But first, let me show you an example of how we display the specimens in a shadow box. In order to fix the fossils in the desired position within the box, we made a mounting support from three layers of cardboard from a shipping box. The layers are glued together with regular all-purpose glue. The top layer has holes cut out with a scalpel or a razor, following the profile of the petrified wood slabs. Simple tracing with a pen will be enough to mark the edges of the slabs. The middle layer consists of short pieces that increase the thickness to keep the specimens stuck securely inside without falling out. The lowest layer is a plain piece serving as a base. We painted the top cardboard with black acrylic paint inserted each specimen in its own slot, making sure it fits firmly, and placed this assembly into a shadow box. It looks very nice. Beware that if your specimen has bark, it may chip off, so you have to be careful to avoid such a mishap. Now, let's take a closer look at several pieces of petrified wood that we selected to showcase. They have diverse geographical origins, Madagascar, Brazil, and Australia. The species are Araucaria and tree ferns, including the relatively rare Paleo osmunda. In this particular slab of Paleo osmunda from Australia, the plant tissues were replaced with semi-transparent silica, helping to make the three-dimensional structures inside the wood visible, especially when the slab is placed in front of a bright light source. The central part of the stem cross-section consists of pith, xylem, and phloem bundles. Note the elongated loops of xylem strands. These large cells arranged in a honeycomb pattern are cells of xylem, supporting the flow of water and minerals up against gravity towards the leaves. Here we have a base of a petiole, defined by the ring of the supportive tissue, sclerenchyma, which surrounds the xylem strands. You have to remember that it's a transverse section, and each circular structure was actually a column extended in a vertical direction. The anatomical features are extremely well preserved, and it's hard to believe that they lasted from the Jurassic period and the plant was growing sometime between 145 and 200 million years ago. The common name of Osmunda is royal fern. The specimens of Osmunda are often found as rounded rocks because the original sediments from the Jurassic Age eroded, and pieces of petrified wood ended up among the gravel in the riverbeds of more recent rivers. So, the perfect cross-sections are hard to find. Let's check out the slab under UV light. The ability of petrified wood to emit fluorescence is well known. Many minerals can be fluorescent, but, in most cases, a small amount of certain impurities is needed to make the fluorescence possible. The presence of calcite, or chalcedony, is probably the main reason why petrified wood is fluorescent. 
The rest is determined by the unique mineral composition of each specimen. Most of the fossilized wood we examined had plenty of yellow fluorescence. Let's switch to another tree fern. We identified this one as Psaronius brasiliensis, based on the long and curvy brands of xylem in the center of the trunk. Another similar type of fossilized fern, Teotea singularis, has short and round, often C-shaped, xylem bands. The specimen was collected in the previous century by local villagers in Brazilian state of Tocantins, supposedly somewhere between the towns Araguaina and Carolina. It likely came from the deposits of the early Permian age, meaning that it is approximately 280 million years old. The fossil plants from this region usually have pleasant hues of pink and gray. The tree ferns did not have branches, just long stems with leaves sticking out at the top to catch the solar energy, and roots protruding into the soil to absorb water and to support the plant in vertical position. As a result, the cross sections from the bottom of the now petrified stems have thicker layers of the root mantle. See? You can now tell if the specimen comes from the top or from the bottom of the tree fern, right? The petrified tree ferns from Brazil are historically assigned to either the Pedra de Fogo or Motuca formation of middle to late Permian period, with high probability that petrified wood from Araguaina and Philadelphia areas belong to the lower part of the Matuca formation. The fossil plants from this place are found in intermixed sand and mudstones, indicating that they were dislodged during the floods and deposited in fluvial channels under mineral-rich mud near the shores of a large, ancient lake or river. The analysis of the matrix surrounding the fossils, a presence of evaporates with gypsum, in particular, and the xenomorphic anatomy of the ancient plants suggests that they were grown in the environment with seasonal droughts. Xenomorphic means morphological feature helping a plant to resist drought and store water. Succulents are a good example of plants with xenomorphic features. The presence of the remains of aquatic vertebrates in the same deposit suggests the existence of large bodies of water. By the way, among the early amphibians found in Pedra de Fogo formation are several species of dinosaurs. It's divino, not dino, like the famous dinosaurs. Now, let's move across the globe to the island of Madagascar, rich in petrified wood. Affordable specimens from this area dominate the market, and if you collect petrified wood, all you need is to be patient and wait for the right specimen that would appeal to your taste and is within your budget. Low percentage of petrified tree slabs bear evidence of fungal or bacterial infestation, making the piece more interesting. This slab of Araucaria from Madagascar has plenty of whitish ellipsoidal structures inside the wood. If you look at them under the microscope, you will see something resembling degrading wood fibers. Isn't it cool? Here is another piece of Araucaria branch turned into a rock. Araucarias have scaly leaves that can form arrangements unusual for most of the modern-day trees. Unfortunately, it's only chunks of trunks that survived as fossils. They're often not evenly round, indicating the probability of enormous pressure that flattened them into ellipses. Let me remind you that this is a piece that is over 200 million years old. Let's dwell on this fact for a moment. Time is important. In fact, Time defines our universe and allows things to unravel instead of being frozen. What attracts many fossil collectors and people who like antiques as well is that you can catch a glimpse of the past, in a sense, take a step back and look from the distance to appreciate the magnitude, the magnificent enormousness of time, its infinite beauty and the beauty of its infinity. It reminds me of someone standing at the edge of a cliff, looking down and feeling an urge to jump. Staring into an abyss of time with a clear mind is a brave thing to do. 
Multiple religions were born to put psychological blinds between horrified consciousness and that bottomless abyss of time, a fence to make poor souls feel secure and protected from that scary reality of the merciless universe. Now, I'll show you a few smaller pieces of Araucaria from Madagascar and their cellular structures, which may be quite diverse within a single specimen. Fantastic colors and a variety of microscopic structures, it's all a long-gone life, beautifully preserved in stone. I hope that, if you have petrified wood in your collection, you will appreciate it more after watching this video. If you are inspired to acquire one, please remember that you will need finely polished surface to see the cells. Rough slabs do not do the trick. Let us know which of the featured pieces you like the most, and what type of fossils is your favorite. Most of the specimens we own are fluorescent, but we are yet to find the one that would impress us with a bright green or red fluorescence. The effect, by the way, depends on the wavelength of the light applied to excite fluorescence. We have a 10 watt flashlight emitting photons at 365 nanometers. I also want to add that a UV flashlight can be handy when looking for the authenticity of a fossil, because modern day resins used for restorations are fluorescent. Just remember that exposure to UV light can cause damage to the eyes, leading to significant and prolonged pain. The problem is that you may not feel it right away. The pain comes later and usually means a horrible, sleepless night with the feeling like your eyes are full of sand. So definitely avoid looking at the UV light directly. Remember about the reflection and have UV protective glasses on to minimize the possible impact. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to keep in touch, and I'll see you next time. Bye.